So today we're going to make a spud and Tony's going to explain what it's for. It's for peeling bark and this goes against the log. This is used to cut it. And this is used to clip around any knots. Uh-huh. Okay, so we're going to start with a, just a piece of steel and shape it to become a yeah. spud. And what we're going to do is make this part of it, the socket we'll make later. Leaf string from a truck? Yeah. yeah. And why that kind of steel? Uh, because it, it has spring to it, it's 5160, and, and it'll keep an edge, and it's quite tough. And how hot are you going to heat it before you start to shape it? Probably around 1900 degrees Fahrenheit. And it's, it's wider than it needs to be, but it's thinner than it needs to be. So we got to thicken it up and shorten it. And you tell by the color uh, when the temperature is correct? Yeah. And do your glasses help that? Um, yeah, they do. Yeah, yeah, they do. Because I can look at the fire without hurting my eye. Okay, well, we'll wait while that gets hot. That's banking the fire to keep, yeah. keep the heat in. Keep the heat in. Keep the heat in and provide fuel for later. You don't want the fire to get down. So this tradition of blacksmithing's been around a thousand years at least. Oh yeah, what yeah. Do we know where it was invented? Uh, I'm going to go with North Africa, but lots of gas. Power hammer. And he watches the color. So that it's still hot enough to be able to be shaped. Now it's cooled, he has to put it back in the heat. When you're upsetting, you forge it, you take it up, uh, you take it, you put it back in the fire quicker because the steel will buckle because it's thin and you're trying to make it thin. Now you can see the, the shape has changed. And the thickness has changed as well. It's thicker than it was before. dark end is cooling and then one at the top is still red hot so we can still shape that. Now that he's not using it you can see the scale that's come off and that's an oxide. Yeah. And it's created by the heat and the oxygen changing the outside of the metal. Metallic iron oxide. Okay. Uh, magnetic iron oxide. Okay. So this is the beginning of making of the notch. He's going to use this tool to drive it, make a uh, indentation so that he'll be able to cut the notch. See the beginning of an indentation there.
Okay, this is what we're making. See how this comes down like that? Yeah. Comes comes to an edge. Edge, yeah. It also comes to an edge in the front and that way. This is the thickest point is right here at the... Right, so now you're going to be making the edges? Yeah, and so what we'll do here is you see this is thick and thick. Maybe just a tad thicker than the other, but it's it'll come down when we forge it. It'll come out. It'll be oversized, and then we'll trim it. Okay. Because it's easier to trim than it is to add. Yeah, it's coming. A different shape tool to help change the angle. Okay, so you're going to start and shape it this Yeah, loop. and then it'll come down. It'll make that side much narrower. It'll make it into a wedge shape. Okay, so that's the edge that you're going to be eventually making sharp. Yeah, that'll be the one that comes sharp the, the, on my right-hand side. Yeah. Okay, so let's watch it in action. Yeah, just about. Good job. Good. So now we're going to start shaping the head. Start to see it getting thinner. So, using another tool to make it help it along. going to do but we can't film is we're going to be hitting this to sharpen to make that straight edge on the end of that so next time you see it it should have a straight edge okay the shape is coming back to the traditional hammering hitting the outside edges so that they squeeze out to become so that they can be sharpened. Experienced blacksmiths know exactly where to hit, how many times, and when the steel is ready to be changed. Back to shaping. You can actually see the metal getting thinner. Yeah, I 
can take, I can start, I've got a, quite a bit oversized, you see, eh? Yeah. So we're going to trim some off. Yeah, well. Okay, up for the final pounding. Got a hammer on a slight angle right on the edge so that you can make it as thin as possible. Any kind of roughness can be taken off when it's being ground. Now I was going to trim some of it with the Okay, you're all right there? Yeah, I'm going to take another bite. If you can hold... Uh, I can pull the... Okay? Okay, yeah. Ready? Ready. Yeah, see that takes some... Yeah, that's pretty good. So, now we've bounded it and shaped it, and you can see that the curve is going in the same direction as the one that we're modeling it on. So it's getting closer and closer. Just a little, few more taps. It looks cold, but it's still very, very hot. So Tony's able to still shape it. You can yeah, see that pretty, they're absolutely yeah, right on. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, it's going to work. Good. Okay, going to put it in the ashes because that that annuls it. It does what? Annuls it, softens the iron, so we can do the final cleanup, and so we can clean it up with a file. Right. Uh, so that actually softens the steel by uh, cooling it in ash. Yeah, what it does is it relieves the pressure uh, from the heat. Well, yeah, because basically when you when you work it hot, you set up stresses in the metal, and when you cool it slowly, you relieve the stresses. Okay, so so it's getting it de-stressed in there. You want me to put it back there, Jane? Oh, okay. All right, so you can see we've got the straight edge, and it's rough, but that can be taken off. So it's uh, ready to be ground. Okay, we're taking the uh, piece out of muriatic acid, which has taken uh, the scale off and is now being put in a bath to neutralize it. The scale is very hard on files, so this will make it softer and easier to shape the outside, the yeah. covering. So, after scrubbing and soaking, it's now starting to look like the metal that's going to be finished. Now he's taking a pipe and shaping it so that it will fit on the spud itself and will have the wooden handle. So it's temporarily welded to a pipe so he can handle it. It's going to be made into a cone shape. So this is the final shaping. You can see the scale that's being knocked off. That's the oxidization from the heat. That's a little plug that was in it. So, a couple more visits and it will be finished. So this is the finished product of the socket. So this end will be attached to the spud itself and this end will have the wooden handle which we'll show you uh, after the filing how the wood is going to fit in there. So this is the filing that's going to make the final shape. 
and it just takes a lot of good old fashioned elbow grease to shape it. Very sharp file because the steel is extremely hard. See Tony making a, an edge, like a knife edge. Being very careful not to cut himself. Because he hates getting blood on his work. Makes it rust. <laughs> okay, we'll show you the So here Tony's using a sanding disc on a grinder to make the final finish on it. You can see how it started to glisten. Which means it's getting close to being polished. So now that it's polished, the socket is in place and Tony's going to weld it so it will be there forever. So we can't record this because it's too bright, but you'll be able to see the, the sparks on the side. As it... So all freshly welded and still hot and smoking. So now he'll grind that down and we'll show you the beginnings of the handle for this spud. So here Tony is uh, roughing out the handle. Good old Lanark maple. So after a lot of filing and scraping, you just scrape, you're going to just turn it while you scrape off a little more. This is to make it smooth, no slivers. And you can see the shape has come a long way from the original cutting it out of the block. So now he's going to sand it, holding sandpaper, and you can see the difference. Grubby hands. Okay, and now it'll be ready to put the spud on the end. All 
Okay, the spud is ready to be put on the handle and it fits and it'll tap it snug. And there we are. And we there's a screw in. Where the hole where we're going to put a screw and it will be finished.